Let's talk about collisions. So a long time ago, there was a Mythbusters episode. I honestly don't even remember which one it was. But they wanted to do a head-on collision. So they had two cars, and they wanted to do a 50-mile-per-hour versus a 50-mile-per-hour crash like that. And it's not easy to do if you don't have people in there because you've got to get them both move. they got to both be lined up and everything. An easier collision would be to hold this one stationary and then just drive one into there. And then, of course, that's not the same thing. And they said, oh, my track's not level. And they said, well, what if... Instead of a 50-50, I do a 100 mile per hour, zero mile per hour collision. Is that the same thing? So let's explore that question uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, we want to look at the damage done to each car. So I have a little uh, aluminum foil bumper that can co collapse when it gets, when there's an impact. So let's do uh, a fit, and they, they would both have bumpers, but I'll put bumpers on one of them because, you know. So. Let's do a, sl a slow collision. I'm going to push these very slowly towards each other. I have some launchers, but I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to kind of, kind of estimate. I'm going to push them very slowly, and let's look at what happens during the collision. So here they go. So you see it, it, it compressed the bumper a little, <clears throat> little bit. Now, I didn't get a completely... I would like for them to stop afterwards, but they don't stop. That's fine. Just imagine they stop. Oh, that, one, that was bad. They weren't going the same speed. Really slow. Here we go. Okay, that wasn't either. Well, you get the idea. I think you get the idea. So, if I have um, an internal force, if, if car, red car pushes on blue car the same that blue pushes on red for the same amount of time, then they have to have the same change in momentum. Another way we can say that is that the uh, momentum of the collision before is the same as the momentum afterwards. And so momentum, we use uh, P, I'll use the scalar version, is mass and velocity. So in this case, let's say I have uh, MV going that way, negative MV going this way, wait, which is your negative direction? Negative would be, that's positive, this one's negative, negative MV, positive MV, so the momentum before the collision is zero, and then if they collide and stop, the momentum afterwards is zero too. So that's all fine and dandy. What about energy? The, the amount of damage done to the car comes from the energy, because if, these, if this has a one-half kinetic energy, I should write that down, K is one-half mv squared. So since v is squared, and because it's, it's the magnitude of the vector, it's always positive. So this one doesn't have negative kinetic energy, and this one has positive. They both have positive kinetic energy. So this has one half mv squared, this has one half mv squared, but after they collide and stop, they have zero kinetic energy. So where did it all go? It went into the bumper. Now let's switch to the case where I hold this one stationary and I push this one twice as fast. So I'm going to push this twice as fast, uh, approximately. Let me fix my bumper back the way it was. And you'll notice that it compressed a lot more. Okay. So in this case, I double the speed of this one so it has twice the momentum. This one has zero momentum. But still, after the collision, the momentum zero. So it seems like it's the same thing. But if I double the velocity, if I double the velocity, I'm going to get four times as much kinetic energy. So now the only one car is moving, but still there's a four times one half. So I actually get double the kinetic energy. If this one's going 100 uh, and this one's stationary, or they're both going 50, this would have double the kinetic energy of the system of them both going together. So that means it's going to give more damage to the car. Now, there is a way to fix this. So that's what the Mythbusters did. They said, hey, what, what, if, we, what if we collide it with a wall going 100 and it did a lot more damage? Um, and that's just the way it works. On top of that, if you collide it with a wall, all that kinetic energy goes into one car, whereas if you collide two cars together, then both cars get uh, damage from the kinetic energy. But there's a way to fix it. Watch this. Okay. This is just an approximation. I wish my thing was level. I'm going the wrong way. Raise that. That's why. I raise it. Okay. Is that level? No. Okay. That's good enough. 
So here we go. I'm going to push this one twice the speed. And I'm not going to hold the red car. Okay, here we go. So it didn't compress the, the bumper as much as it did when I held it. Let's just repeat the holding, the holding time type. See, that pushed, that compressed it a lot more. So what happened here is if this car is not moving, then I have, uh, yes, I have more kinetic energy in this if I double the speed. But after the collision, this one recoils in order to conserve momentum. They're both moving that way. And so that means it has some kinetic energy. This gets some of the kinetic energy. This has some of the kinetic energy. And then some goes to the, to the, to the damage. And it turns out that analyzing it either way is the same because in physics, we have reference frames of where we measure stuff, and there's no absolute reference frame. I'm using this room as a reference frame, but the room's moving. So if you were outside of the Earth looking at this, you would see these cars already moving because the Earth's moving. Now, the Earth's actually rotating. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Let's just pretend. But if I change to a reference frame, imagine I have this one stationary and I change the reference frame of the center mass so it's moving half the speed in that reference frame, then we get back to the same collision where this one's going 50 and that one's going 50 that way and it's the same thing. So we shouldn't disagree on the amount of damage because that's the real thing that we see uh, based on our reference frame. So you can replace a stationary car a 50-50 collision with a, a stationary car and a moving car twice the speed, but you got to let it recoil, and then it works. You like that? <laughs>